Okay. So okay. now we got video live and then I will activate audio separately to get the podcast going. So as um, we've done in the past, actually you've not been on virtually yet. So no. only in person. So a lot That's has right. changed. <laughs> I haven't, I'm not eating. Yeah. Sorry. I don't have the best visual. Uh, Oh yeah, you know, you. yeah, we're not sitting down at lunch and rushing me out of conference. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, stand by, I'll do a live intro and then welcome you to the uh, recording. So. Cool. All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live the fuel show. So today I'm bringing back on a returning co-host from 2016 and not just anywhere in 2016, but actually this was a returning co-host who we actually recorded live over lunch while attending the Thrive Make Money Matter event in San Diego. And I believe that was around late October, uh, maybe up until the first, I think November 1st was the actual final date closing out that weekend. Uh, but we sat down over lunch because we were just hustling so much with energy and connecting in this Thrive event, which we've talked about many, many times over past episodes on this show. Uh, a lot of powerful guests, a lot of powerful people. And I'm looking forward to catching up with this gentleman. So uh, this, this guy, you can find him anywhere pretty much online under the brand Live Great Lifestyle. Uh, but you can also go straight to his website, which is LukeDeprone.com. And obviously, Luke, welcome back to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Nice to do this without, you know, a... Uh uh, a fork in my mouth or a hamburger in my face or whatever we were eating. I don't even remember. Hey man, I, I, don't, <laughs> I think we were all eating something relatively healthy because you being a fellow fitness buff and me being a fitness buff. And then, uh, oh yeah. And to Tony, Tony was hanging out. Yep. Um, the Insta guy. And I believe he still is the Insta guy. So yeah, uh, shout, shout out to Tony. And, uh, so Luke, man, dude, we've been following each other online ever since thrive. Uh, you pretty much have similar feed posts that I do <laughs> as far as, <laughs> Uh, I actually am looking at your Instagram feed right now. There's a, looks like some greens salad or something. So uh, you, you just have more beautiful photos because <laughs> to our listeners, this guy is based out on the West coast in Cali uh, and bounces around. He can just, for people who've never been to California, you can get, you can pop back over to Arizona. It's so easy from California to get around the West. So, uh, but look, man, catch us up. What's been up? Um, what's new, man? Well, I actually just got back from a mastermind myself, speaking of, you know, business stuff and uh, things like Thrive. So I was just in Vegas. Uh, did you rock weekend. the beard at the mastermind? I did have the beard. Yeah. So I threw everybody through a loop who I had not met when I posted a photo of sh having shaved a beard. So, oh, nice. uh, yeah. So, you know, Vegas is always a, uh, always a trip, um, particularly for somebody who, if you're normally eating healthy and, and working out to go dive into that land for a couple of days is, um, it's fun. It's fun to do and then step back and get back to reality and uh, some healthy food and not having alcohol and all of those, you know, those more real life things. It's, it's like everything in moderation, man. Like uh, this, this is sort of for our listeners, guys, we're recording this on Memorial Day weekend, 2017. So uh, he and I are always hustling so much that yes, today is Monday actually of Memorial Day. And we yeah. are probably celebrating and honoring this in different forms and fashions. But in the end, it, it, we also could take an hour out of our time to put quality messaging out there. So I just want to respect the fact that you've taken time on a powerful day like this. And I'm sure you've got other events and things you're going to today to obviously honor a day like today. Yeah. And I'm actually going to go, uh, I'm going to go rock it with a few clients today. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as in uh, fitness wise. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So again, to our listeners, guys, you can go, you can go back on our website, livethefuel.com and go back to episode 019 or you just do livethefuel.com slash 019. You can find, uh, obviously our first episode where it was actually titled live great lifestyle and biomechanics mm -hmm. at thrive because we literally went out on lunch break <laughs> during the conference and recorded this in a booth while trying to eat and drink. And it was, uh, Obviously, episode 19 was pretty early on for the show. So, yeah. And actually, I think we pulled it off pretty well, man. I, yeah. I mean, considering it was, you know, portable equipment and we're chowing down lunch, um, you know, we talked and about And I was the only podcaster recording live at that event, by the way. So. I think so. Yeah. Which is, which is well done because there's about 450 people there. So, I thought we were close to six. Was it? Okay. I, yeah, it could I have sworn I heard like 600 or something like that. But I could be. There's a wait, lot. Were you at the first thrive? I didn't go to the first thrive. Okay. So, cause that's why I was like, well, maybe the first drive was 450, second drive was 600. Um, and again, to our listeners, that's thrive, make money matter. It's a big, big event. I mean, he, like Luke just talked about coming back from a mastermind event. I literally 
consider that like a mastermind conference. I don't know. How would you refer to that? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to, you, you definitely come back buzzing, um, obviously with ideas, <laughs> no question. Um, and I think the overall message of a for purpose business is pretty powerful. Um, and that, that I think gets everybody pretty jazzed when you come back. Yeah, let's, let's, let's pause on that. There's so many things you and I can be catching up on, but since you brought that up, why did you and I, and probably every other person at the event walk away with, with that powerful message. I mean, besides the fact that obviously a lot of great speakers were justifying it, <laughs> you know, um, how do you talk to it? So I think most people intuitively want to help other people. Um, and you saw it, you know, we're fortunate in the fitness industry. I was actually talking to my brother-in-law about this. Who's kind of working on a startup and you know, we're lucky in that, we get, to, we get to touch people pretty uh, closely in the sense of we're just one degree away from change, right? As a CrossFit coach or, again, the coaching that I do. So I can see a change in someone's life, and I get a lot of reward and feedback from that. Um, versus, say, you're somebody who, if you make software, well, you know your software helps somebody eventually down the line, um, whereas we're right hands-on, and we're like the, you know, as close as you can get to seeing someone having a positive change. And at the at, at Thrive, it was pretty evident listening to people who had got who would get up, who maybe they were just starting their business. Um, they had a big dream or vision. They weren't sure what they wanted to do, but a pretty consistent theme was you heard people talking about helping people. And so I think the the make money matter aspect really does uh, resonate with people. Um, again, I think intuitively people are looking. They want to make a difference. Um, they want to connect with people. Yeah, people want to make money. Um, but that was something that was pretty common to hear, uh, even from people who didn't have anything going, but like pencils for promise. I mean, when they get up and talk about their message, people are really blown away by that. And I think we all deep down want to have, um, you know, whether it's bigger purpose, bigger connection. I think that's a pretty consistent theme there. Yeah. It's funny because obviously that was probably the higher level message that I definitely took away because we did so many things at that event to impact just positive messaging, making money matter. You brought up pencils of promise. Uh, heck, shout out to our boy, uh, PJ. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we helped him obviously build or, or they will be building his school. And he actually, I think mm -hmm. he called it Thrive Academy, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think he named it Thrive Academy. So that's just one example out of that. But also to realign that messaging, and I, I love because like briefly what you just mentioned, something about obviously we all need to make money. And I, I have, I like to be transparent for people. And I like, you know, I struggle with money as I've grown over the years because I've had the highs and the lows and it's a very educational process. And I think one of the underlying principles that actually always held me back was I have no problem making money. I tell people all the time, like, dude, we can all make money. Right. If, you have, if you have the right mindset, you lose your money, you'll make more money. I've done it right. over time yeah. and time again. I think one of the messages I took out of this was not just aligning ourselves with purpose, uh, have a purpose driven business, uh, because that is just very clean. And it just, it takes away that a lot of the, I guess, stigma of, Oh, I got to make a lot of money. I'm like, well, if you're aligning with purpose, you're, you're also getting back more while you're making money. So it's a great fun alignment. And, uh, but I think part for me was also a couple of the speakers really talked to the fact that, like Grant Cardone, <laughs> that guy's <is> crazy. <laughs> Holy yes. crap, that guy was hilarious. Uh, oh, but yeah. but he was like, basically, you know, dude, man, it's okay to make money. Like, why does everybody think it's weird and inappropriate for people to talk about being rich and successful? And I admit it, like when I, me growing up, I never had a lot of money, so I always looked at it as, oh, that rich guy or that rich family. And uh, I was, I've always wondered, like, what your thoughts were on that? Because it's like, dude, this is we're coming up on Thrive again this year, so I'm looking forward right. to. Figure well, look, this out at, again. look at what people are like exposed to. I mean, so yeah, there's shows like uh, uh, Secret Millionaire, which actually at this mastermind, I just got to hear James Malinchak speak and met him. Super nice guy. Oh no shit, he was there? Yeah. Oh, there's about, there's about 20 of us and yeah, it's, uh, super nice guy. Dude, your West Coast masterminds are way better than these guys. I, I <laughs> yeah, swear right. to God, I'm going to start, start my own out here. I just don't hear about uh, as many fun masterminds as when I'm like following all you guys. I'm like, yeah, what the there's, hell? There's a little more going out here on out here. But I think, I think, uh, you know, it's funny, like, look at what you're exposed to. You're exposed to something like, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian. I mean, like you're exposed to like rich people on TV, like desperate housewives. And it's like rancid, terrible, like, where's the, you know, where's the theme of, uh, again, making money matter, um, in the mainstream, you don't see as much of it. Um, and even when you think of, you know, obviously like 
for profit versus a nonprofit, most people's idea of, I think even like a charity is oftentimes struggling. It's the people out, uh, outside of a grocery store, you know, trying to hustle you to get money. Um, so I think there's a, you know, a disconnect between seeing people who are wealthy that do positive things versus you see the, again, the, the Kim Kardashians of the world. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what's in people's face. It's like, that's what being rich is. Yeah, I, I, I will agree with you on that because unfortunately, that's why I'm a, one of my best practices I teach people all the time is like, get rid of cable, man. Like stop oh, yeah. surrounding yourself with uh, the, I, I call it the triple N, the, the, uh, the negative news networks, right? Like those, yeah. three, those three ends, man, do not belong together. You got to break that apart. And one of the ways you do it is you stop getting the newspaper. Some people mm -hmm. argue with me on this and I'm like, well, that's education. I'm like, no, it's what they choose to put in that magazines, newspapers, uh, traditional cable. I, I have nothing. I have none of it. I mean, we have an Apple TV and that's it. So I'm, it's, I'm on your side of that. I, I, uh, that's the Tim Ferriss, uh, you know, someone yeah. else will tell you if something big is going on. And what's nice is honestly, if there's something that's happening in the world that you do need to know about, you are a Google away. Yeah. So as soon as you catch wind of it, you can find out everything you need to know and think how inundated we are with information um, through your news feed on Facebook, the news app. I had to delete that from my phone because I found myself using that as my Kim K to look at what crazy stuff was going on. Yeah, well, at least the iPhone finally lets you delete those indigenous apps <laughs> yeah, because for a while we couldn't even get rid of them. And right. now I'm like, they actually let you literally delete the app off the iPhones. So there's your hack to listeners, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just gave you a great one here. If you're an iPhone user for the longest time, anything that was installed stock from Apple, they wouldn't let you delete the app. And I've gotten rid of that one and a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Just, I never used them. I was just cluttering my phone. Yep. So, you know, another thing that I did that I found from a productivity standpoint that was very helpful, and it seems so trivial that it shouldn't do anything. Um, obviously, we use Facebook and Instagram for marketing, but even myself, it's like I'll find myself just habitually picking up my phone and just, you know, scrolling. I'm like, what am I doing? By just moving those icons to the second screen on my iPhone. Yeah. It was such an easy thing because when I pick up my phone, I log in. If I see on the first page, it's like I have my schedule for clients. I have um, Duolingo app, right? I could open Duolingo and like maybe do some Spanish flashcards. But if that Facebook app was there, again, it became like a habitual, like, oh, just click on it. And by just moving that to one page over where I have to, you know, swipe the screen, mm -hmm. that's reduced the amount of bullshit time on social media versus tactical time a ton. I mean, well, I, I wish I had a percentage, but it's been a lot. <laughs> yeah. So do you do the app groupings too, where you, you condense them into squares? Like I don't, but like yeah, that. that'd be useful. Yeah. Oh, my phone's a mess. I didn't want to see it. Well, the cool thing is, so I haven't done what you've done. All my social media is technically on the first page, but because I've condensed, like I have a square just with everything that it relates to Instagram, like anything that mm -hmm. I do, my quotes or my custom like image design, all that's grouped into like an Instagram square and then I have a Facebook square, but that's a great hack you just said. But then another thing is like, I, if that actually is coming up on the screen, I don't know if the glow is too much, mm, too, but too bright. Yeah, it's too bright, but you have those little red numbers popping up. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I got a lot. hack your phone, go into your notifications and say, you know what? I don't want the little red numbers coming up saying that there's two pending, you know, mm -hmm. things or three pending things. Like, Hey, when I get in there, I'll get in there. Yep. Now I will say, I don't know about you, but I've actually had to open myself up a little bit more and I'm okay with it. I've, I've been adapting over the past few months, but I started allowing more people to communicate with me over Facebook messenger. I don't know if you've seen that as well. Yeah. Like, I felt like, cause one of the takeaways from thrive, I forget who said it was, maybe it was the Irish guy. Um, Phil yeah. was his name. He was talking about being approachable and being accessible. Mm -hmm. And some people feel like they get so successful, so rich, so powerful that now they've reduced their approachability. And that has to be managed to a certain point. Uh, but that's where it's like, I've turned off all my notifications for a lot of these apps. But when it comes to like the Facebook Messenger, I will allow that one because that's become a communication channel. Right. And that's, yeah. That's funny. That's the one I actually just recently disconnected. And here's Interesting. why. So again, psychologically, and Facebook knows this, and we talk about, again, thinking about managing our energy and our time, um, whether it's, you know, from a nutrition, health, uh, business. Uh, so that, you know, that, that messenger would pop up with a little red and just knowing, oh, someone's reached out to me. Oh, oh, somebody wants to talk to me. What's going on? And I'd go and I would click on that. Even if I was in the middle of something, that little, I mean, it was like a, pa, you know, a Pavlog's dog thing, like that sure. little red, I, I'd go to it. 
And Facebook, so that they've realized this because I disconnected that. And every once in a while, a red dot pops up. And I'm like, hey, that's weird. I've disconnected it. No, what it is is a notification to let me know that I have turned off notifications. That's what I have like, all the time right on. now. No, I've done that. You are right. I have yeah. that. And yeah. every time I go into the settings, you can't get rid of the red no. exclamation point. You and can't. I'm like, dude, I get it, but back it down, bro. Like, I don't right. need it. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just time. I mean, everybody's fighting, obviously, for your attention and time. And yeah. uh, so how do you protect it? Because it's well, the most... Well, let's be real. You have clients, right? right? I've, I've dealt with, uh, God, I'll go back to corporate world type of uh, communications of stuff. We talk about, oh, well, what's your SLA, right? Your service level agreements. So like, what is your right. service level agreement or yeah. AKA expectations you're setting with your clients or your friends or your connections? So it's like, hey, man, if I get back to you in a day or two, the world ain't coming to an end, okay? Right. Yeah. Now, if you have some type of business or relationship where you have people who need to reach you quickly, they're probably not going to do it over Facebook Messenger. They're probably going to call you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've had to set up, uh, you know, with certain, with certain clients. Um, I'm extremely accessible to my clients. Um, however, with certain things like uh, scheduling, it's like, hey, I need you to schedule via email. Because if I have to, I've, there's just too many touch points at this point in most people's lives between, I mean, multiple messengers on social media apps, multiple emails for many people, to be honest, phone, text, and all of a sudden you're wrangling cats. Um, so for me, setting parameters of, hey, these type of messages, if you just need a quick thing, you can text, shoot me a message. But, you know, for like something like scheduling, I need it all to be somewhere because I'm going to lose it. And, yes. you know, it, it's going to get out of control. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm glad you're bringing this up because, I mean, again, for our listeners, guys, if you go to L-U-K-E-D-E-P-R-O-N.com, that's his name, Luke, Luke it, it's, he's got it right on his website, Get Lean, Healthy, and Fit. And I'm going to go right to the second words there, the healthy, and the, third, the last one, the fit. Healthy and fit, this isn't just physical. And I'm constantly, especially more and more this year, I think 2017 has really become, for me, the year of mindset. Uh, yeah. I just, I just spoke at an event uh, a couple of weeks ago and almost every single speaker, as we listened to the, every speaker going up on stage, we all ended up admitted that we got up when we got up, I completely threw my pre-designed like, conversation that I was going to have out the window. We just kept focusing on mindset. I just lived in the moment because we just ended up all focusing on mindset, but obviously we spoke to it from a different perspective from each of our backgrounds. And that's one thing I got to keep reminding people. My guys, healthy and fit isn't just physical. I mean, obviously, you go to this guy's website. Go to Luke's site to the listeners, guys. He's a fit dude. All right, so he clearly knows how to stay fit and live the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of this, what we're talking about here today is mindset. And yeah. anybody can go to the gym and just put in the, uh, the reps, so to speak, and do the exercises. But also, do you have the bulletproof mindset to keep that going? Have you built this into your lifestyle? Yeah, it's uh, it's funny the the gym part. I tell people, for a lot of us, it's like that's not the work. Um, you know, as somebody who likes to say, "Oh, I work hard," and it's like you know, to go do some eighty pound split squats. That's not patting myself on the back and saying I'm working hard because that's easy and fun. That's not the hard, and that's not the work for me. The work would be oh, I need to work on the mobility today, or I need to do some meditation, and having the mindset to kind of do the stuff that maybe you do you don't necessarily want to do, um, but the high priority stuff. Uh, and it's interesting the, you know, you, that messaging on there, lean, healthy, and fit. Almost everybody starts the, the fitness stuff with the physique goal, mm -hmm. but it's the health aspects, both emotionally, mentally, and physically that I think keep people going. Um, and I'm sure you've experienced this as a coach. It's really fun. I was just talking to somebody yesterday about this. It's really fun to hear someone try to describe how good they feel once they start improving their health. Oh God. Yeah. Because you do, you start, there's a hormonal shift. There's a chemical shift. I'm just going to, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to bring up the, uh, your site for the, for the people on the YouTube video feed when we publish this, because like, here you go. Here's what I was just talking about. Like boom, right there, get lean, healthy and fit. Um, but yeah, when you start getting those physical, uh, responses from the body, when the body starts communicating back to you and talking back to you, and you get some of that through the brain, through just, oh man, I don't know how to explain it. Like you're just, you're just, there's a powerful nervous system response to, there's all these different things that start happening when you start getting your act together. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a lot of those, and again, you being a, a trainer and everything else, there's, there's a lot of early on stuff that people get high off of. 
yeah. they get that early high. And then all of a sudden that, that flattens out or maybe flat lines a little bit. And they don't realize that, wait a minute, there was more to this than just that first 30 day high. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's almost getting into maintenance in the sense that, uh, you know, this, I was at a uh, cookout yesterday and me and a guy were talking, this is just getting built out this, this website. So no judgment here. Still fine. Hey man, we live in the moment. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> show, because like what we show here today. And then when we have you back on again in the future, well, it's cool to show like where you've come from too. So yeah. that's why I love like sharing, showing where people are at. And like, and honestly, there's a lot of people who don't even have websites. So <laughs> <laughs> I got, I have too many websites. That's the problem. Keep yes. them around. Well, and we talked about that. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you talk about condensing and branding and all that, mm -hmm. but yeah, continue on what you're saying here. Um, so I'm trying to think, where was I going with that? Um, what the hell was I saying? Well, we were kind of leaning back towards, I just got, just got done mentioning the whole people get that 30 day high and now oh, it's like, right. Oh yeah, let's start programming something into a more of a long-term lifestyle here. So, yeah. So I think a lot of people fail to realize. So to me being healthy and, and fit a level of fitness, you don't have to be an extreme athlete, but to me it's, it's almost, it's a fundamental, a fundamental pillar. If you're not, um, you know, if you don't have your health, if you don't have a degree of fitness, you're just not going to operate um, at the highest level, period. Like, I don't care what you're doing. Um, I think of it as one of those core table legs, uh, just like obviously having a healthy mind. And so for a lot of people, getting it into how do I make this last in the long haul? So there's, I think, philosophical approaches there to exercise and obviously nutrition to making that work. But once people achieve that and they start to realize, okay, I'm operating as a mom better because I'm active or I'm a better business owner, whatever it is that you're really into. Um, that to me is kind of the ultimate achievement we're trying to, to acquire to where it's consistent because it's like showering, right? Like mm -hmm. how many days are you going to go without showering before you're like, man, I just don't feel right. This isn't good. This isn't me showing up to the, you know, to my best ability because I'm smelly and dirty. And I think without ex without your health and fitness, you're kind of in the same thing. You're just not operating um, at an optimized level. Yeah, I, actually, that's a great keyword there. Optimized level. Um, a lot of people are, are using nowadays, and I, I use it myself. We throw on the words hack or hacking. I'm trying to hack this, hack that. Um, uh, we can go back to the same reference here. Optimization. You're optimizing your lifestyle. Whatever keyword you're throwing out there, what Luke and I are talking about here today for you listeners is that it's very easy to find a short-term solution. But again, the short-term solution is going to have some crashing and burning involved here, guys. Like you guys got to start building things out in a long-term perspective. Like for example, I talked to a guy and he, he cannot contact me over Facebook maybe almost a month ago. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm ready. To, I want to go on your nutrition program and everything yeah. else. And I was like, cool. All right. I was like, well, what's your why? And yeah. I know you and I can geek out about why's, uh, yeah. but I was like, Listen, he's like, well, he's like, uh, I, I don't have the money right now because I'm, I'm on a budget, but I'm going to set it aside. I'm like, well, what are you going to do now for yourself to start building, right. you know, the, 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 the road, so to speak? And I was like, hell, I mean, even just start weed whacking a, a trail here <laughs> you yeah. know, through the woods. Like, he, I was like, he's like, well, he's like, once I have the money, then I'm good. I'm like, well, that's a short term mindset. Yes, right. I want to I want to put you on a program and, and help you along your way because I know I've helped people with that. But I was like, what are you doing right now? So I literally, and he's not even a paid client. I said, like, listen, throw money out the window. I was like, when you leave this communication with me today, and we, did, we had a live video feed like you and I are doing right now. And I said, when you leave this conversation today, I was like, I'm going to give you one piece of homework. If you want to work with me, you better come back with me with a really strong why. Because right. I can't create that for you. And I've talked about this on other episodes with other people as well. And it's like, dude, if you don't have a strong why that's going to bulletproof, that almost makes you tear up, like it's going to hold yourself accountable. It doesn't matter what program I put you on, what coach I send you to, what mentor I send you to. Like this is one thing that you have to have accountability for. So I was just wondering yeah. what, how, how you would uh, rein in on something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's the same conversation. Um, so for me, again, I look at most people when that conversation starts and you say, well, like, why do you want to do this? Most people, it really is physical. I mean, like that's their superficial starting point. Mm -hmm. um, but getting somebody to go deeper than that, even if it's just one layer, but so say you want to lose 20 pounds, that's a great goal. But like, really, why do you want to lose 20 pounds? And you could say, oh, I could go to the beach because um, I'm going on this vacation. I'm getting married, but just going deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and obviously the deeper that you can go, the better, 
How, Mm -hmm. what's, you know, how are you going to feel? How's your life going to be different when you're 20 pounds lighter? And you start answering some of those questions. Like, what are you going to do? Who are you going to be? How do you envision your life? Um, because there is, we, we know at the end of the day, when you lose 20 pounds, we've seen all of these other things. I have more energy. Oh my gosh, I just feel really good. And people start talking about the energy. Oh, there, um, there's improved self-worth, self-confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and getting people to, to start thinking that even though they haven't experienced it um, and kind of you know dream it out. Like, what is the most confident version of yourself? What would you be doing? And mm-hmm. you're like, oh man, I actually would... Uh, you know, I'd get up and do karaoke. I don't know, whatever it is like, or I'd have more, I'd get up in front of uh, my, my sales team and actually pitch this big idea. Sorry yeah. if my phone's, uh, if I'm blowing up on you. No, no, you're not. But um, it's, it's, it's a valid point. We real quick, what you just said about get up in front of your sales team, for example. Okay. I guarantee you, I've been spent years in sales and marketing. I still do it to this day for my clients and guys like, guess what? There is a physical representation there. Totally. Hands down. If a company is going to look at you to be one of their next sales and marketing professionals. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. They're looking at your physical appearance as well yeah. because it's not, it's not a beauty pageant thing. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. When they see somebody who's healthy and fit and their energy levels are through the roof because they are so healthy and fit mentally and physically, they see energy. They yeah. see results. They see somebody that holds themselves accountable to that certain lifestyle so, and so, uh, cause I used to do a lot of hiring years ago. So I see that and I'm like, great, I can translate that into the position. I can see that that most, more than likely yeah. that person's probably going to be able to deliver the same intensity day in and day out because they have the lifestyle to maintain what we're going to get out of them. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important you brought that up. That's why I wanted to pause real, sec- real quick on that because I'm like, Hey guys, I'm sorry. It's not saying, Oh, we only hire pretty people. That's yeah. not what we're talking about here. We're talking right. about, it shows that you've put your lifestyle at a priority so then everything else in your life benefits from that your family your children your friends your love life your job your career your education if you're going back for an mba dude i don't care who you are if you want to go back for an mba which i think is a waste of money but anyway (laughs) you're gonna go back for an mba and you're you're on nights and weekends you're in school you need energy you need good rest you need good health good fitness good energy i mean it's there's no way you're gonna be able to tackle all this stuff in your life unless you're not taking care of yourself It goes back to, again, showing up at an optimized state and it's, it's, you can see it from the outside looking in. Um, Here's, here's a way to actually maybe hammer this home coming from again. So the in-person work I do is more biomechanics, postural correction. Um, To me, it's just what anybody needs to do to exercise properly. But um, again, we can call it corrective exercise or postural restoration. So you're probably familiar with Amy Cuddy's um, power posing. Oh man, I haven't talked about that. And so, wow, yeah. wow. So let's extrapolate this for a second. So for people who don't know, Amy Cuddy is a researcher and what they, what they determined was in two minutes of power posing, which a power pose would be standing with your arms overhead as if in a celebratory phase, a state or with your hands at your hip, like wonder woman. And what they found, I believe it was, and you correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was through a blind judoko players they found and these guys won their match at the end of the day. What do they do when they go to celebrate? They bring their arms overhead and, you know, they kind of pump their fists and they're pumped up. Mm-hmm. And this wasn't a learned behavior because they're blind. So why do these guys do this? And what they found is in two minutes of these, these poses, you can, I think, and I'm bu- going to butcher the numbers. I think you could raise testosterone by 28%. And you can think of testosterone as like a confidence hormone. And I think it was lowering cortisol by 24%, which is a stress hormone. So for me, I extrapolate that out and I think, all right, if two minutes of just standing up um, is going to have that much of a hormonal change, and again, how you present yourself, whether you're on stage or going for an interview, what does a lifetime of poor posture do? (laughs) What Mm. does, you know, if you, because you can stand up with poor posture, right? But what about actually having full range of joint motion at your hips and your pelvis? And what does the nutrition do? Uh, All of those things. If just two minutes through standing tall, you can have a hormonal change. What does a lifestyle of, you know, uh, sedations, you know, sitting down, I, I can't even imagine. Well, I mean, and, like, for example, you and I right now are standing, having this right. conversation. I'm at my standing desk. I have a lamp up, mounted up here. My, my microphone boom is up here. Like I'm standing here. So it's, I'm, I'm more alert. 
I'm more focused. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I, after spending years in the call center world many years ago, I was like, hell no, <sighs> man. Like, even when I was managing the call center world, I was, I was that guy. Up, everybody's like sitting in their cubies and I'm up standing around like talking and like, that's just how I managed my team. Everybody knew that I was the energy guy. Cause I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to sit in a freaking chair if I don't want to. I and picture you just, as like the wolf of wall street headset guy <laughs> going around the room. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's like, dude, it's like, you see, when you're down, man, your shoulders roll forward, your head, your neck. I mean, people talk about neck pain and, and, uh, but uh, I can get so many different angles with this, but what you just talked about, like something as simple as when you stand up, are you standing up with presence and power? Like you said, right. power poses, right? Like yeah. how many of us are unconsciously standing there, shoulders drip? I mean, Amelia, I just did this on the video, but like my shoulders are just, I'm just standing here like this. And my head kind of naturally starts to dip a little bit too. But when I set my shoulders back, my head gets corrected. My, my neck posture gets corrected. Again, you could talk more to this because you're the biomechanics guy. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I think of it from though. just like, the, I think of it from even just, again, the energetical, energetic states, right? And the, that we were talking about as far as, you know, what's your why? What are you showing up with? And being healthy, being fit. And these, not 20 pounds that you lost, it's not maybe as, you know, maybe you can't measure it, but we've all seen it. Somebody shows up who's dove into it and adopted a health and fitness lifestyle, something that they can keep up for the long haul, and they have a different state. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a different energy about them, and to me, that's the big win. Um, the weight loss is, you know, the tip of the spear, but the, the good stuff is really what we're talking about, having – having more energy, having more confidence, having more presence, and it's really noticeable. And it's, to me, it's probably the most fun thing to see from someone. Um, and and I, I love having them try to explain how they feel after they've gotten there because you can't. It's hard to explain how good it feels to feel good. Yeah, I agree. And just for our, our uh, listeners, I, I, on the video feed, I quickly shared my screen because he had brought up Amy Cuddy. And she's been a TEDx speaker and everything else. And actually, I brought up just one of her TEDx, I guess, the way they, they published about her. But One of her points in here is her research on body language reveals that we can change other people's perceptions. And then obviously says, oh, and perhaps even our own body chemistry. So what what Luke's talking about here, there's so much validity behind this besides just him and I geeking out on. I mean, there is, and she's a social psychologist. So he and I are coming uh, coming at this from the fitness world and the the physical uh, uh, conversation. But you got somebody at the psychological level, a famous social psychologist talking about this. And I also have regular co-hosts on the show from an organization called Mind of the Athlete, who's from here, uh, where I'm at here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And they have three different female sports psychologists. The founder, he's a sports psychologist, and they have a sports nutritionist on staff. They work with uh, elite colleges and, and even cor- they have a corporate program, parenting program, kids program, but they all talk about this from a psychological perspective. Like, how are you showing up? How, again, there's physical benefits, but the mental right. benefit is so powerful. Yeah, it's, and it shouldn't be really shocking to people, but again, getting back to eating, say, just a more whole food, real food, you know, lots of plants, lots of vegetables, good quality meat products, paleo-ish, whatever you want, you know, no sugar, no grains, whatever you want to call it, getting back to kind of eating how you're supposed to, it shouldn't be shocking that by giving your body what it kind of intuitively needs and desires, you're going to operate at a higher level. Oh yeah, because it's it's like, okay, (laughs) there's lots of buzzwords out there, right? What is your macronutrient, micronutrient? Mm -hmm. in the end, the key word there is nutrients. And yeah. yeah, if you're eating a lot of manufactured crap, yep. you have a huge reduction in nutrient density. And, yeah. and we're already having to struggle with nutrient density because of the raping of our soil that we've done in this country. So we're yeah. already coming in at a low point when it comes to food quality. And then you go and compound that with fueling your body with manufactured crap it's like, wow, man, you really got to focus on what, how you're sourcing your food, how you're fueling your body, because it does all this stuff ties back together. We, we already in this episode have been talking about mindset and the psychology, and we're talking about the biomechanics you're talking about, which is the physical posturing and the power posing. And now we're talking about how you fuel the body, right? The nutrition, yeah. the nutrient density. It's so amazing. Like when I get somebody who's basically living a really crappy life. And then you start refueling their body and over a 30, 90, maybe well, we'll go out to 16 week transformation. It's like, whoa, dude, yeah. holy crap. Like 
that, yeah, I'm more energized. I feel like I'm more awake. My stress levels have come down. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, man, like there's a, there's something to this. <laughs> yeah. And once, and once you hit that point, that's where it's kind of easy going because you know, when you're starting out and you're like, shit, I don't really want to give up Pepsi and I really like Oreos. You're not weighing it against anything because you haven't got there, yeah. but you, mo- almost everyone gets to a point where it's like, wow, Pops too sweet. I don't like it. Gummy bears have a weird texture on my teeth. I don't like it. And it's not deprivation. You just don't, you don't like it. Yeah. And you, but somehow appreciate- you fell into a negative ha- habitual process yeah. and just was eating them anyway. <laughs> well, and, and, and this is something I talk a lot about with my clients to remove some of the emotional guilt. You have to understand even so, uh, even me this weekend, I'm in Vegas, I'm drinking alcohol. I'm eating definitely poor quality food. It is challenging in certain aspects in that you are chronically being marketed to the manufacturing process. And we can go into this, the manufacturing process of food and how it does manipulate hormones in your body um, and how it is split tested from a marketing standpoint to they've got that color down. They've got how much salt, sugar, fat, the crunch of the chip, like literally how hard that chip is. They've made it. So it is so hyper pleasurable that you're going to overeat. And if you don't have this understanding you're going to fall back on this like, I'm a piece of shit. I have no willpower. When the reality is you're just fighting against this monster. (laughs) We had this conversation a few weeks back. Um, I forget who I was doing it with, but I'm I'm a marketing guy, not just a fitness guy. And I studied psychology when I'd studied the marketing. Right. So it's like, okay, let's think about this. You got a multi-million, multi-billion dollar company like Coke or Pepsi or, uh, I don't know, any of these other cracker companies, chip companies, like Lay's, whatever. You don't think that they didn't hire somebody at a PhD level of psychology to help them figure out not just the wording and their branding and the advertising. It's all tied in. And then what you just talked about, they're also then tying it back into the physical process. Like, how's that going to taste? Mm -hmm. Hello, that's why sugar is so rampant. Sugar is more addicting than cocaine. We have the studies I'm People an actual talk about sugarholic. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, dude, yeah. your brain gets addicted. Mm-hmm. So if I was a food company and I wanted somebody to get keep buying my stuff, I'm probably yep. going to put some sugar in there. <laughs> have, have, you, have you read The Extraordinary Science of Addictive Junk Food? It's just a short article. No. If you haven't, so it's on, this is something that honestly almost, for anybody listening to this, if you are trying to lose weight, improve your health, it's a short read. It's just an excerpt on the New York times. It's something I make all my clients or recommend to all my clients to read because I find most people, there's a level of guilt that comes with um, when people are trying to adjust their nutritional habits, they tend to stumble. It's a pretty, I know very few people who say, all right, I'm going to eat a paleo ish diet and it's going to be smooth sailing. There's going to be some stumbling blocks. This article right here will liberate you if you've ever carried emotional guilt from whether you're binging. I love how they're showing a Dorito on there. <laughs> oh, it's Scott. It's it's incredible. I mean, they, with the Dorito, um, I'll just tell a quick. This is from t- well, this and and this is I when I googled it. There's a lot of different posts about it, and this is just the one that came up from the New York Times Magazine. This is from published in 2013. Yeah, so. that's the one. That's yeah. that's it's a short read. I mean, just the you know, dive into one little piece of it. I mean, yeah. like that, that Dorito, there's a reason they talk about this, that you'll never see a single flavored Dorito. Like you never will see rosemary flavored Doritos because mm. there's a thing called flavor saturation. That, yes. that, that rosemary flavor, you'll get kind of used to it. And you're like, eh, I've had enough. But the reason that nacho cheese chip is nacho cheese and it has like five different cheeses your taste buds will chronically be kind of hunting and trying to figure out what am I eating? And you'll and keep it's not eating actual find out. cheese. It's no. five different chemical cheeses <laughs> yeah. like, or cheese chemicals that their flavor profiles, everything you're talking about here. Like they, this is all, this is shit done in a freaking lab people. Like yep. this is what we're talking about here. Like they have figured out, Hey, let's confuse the taste buds. Yep. Let's, let's, let's give them five different chemical based, uh, rep, basically reproductions of what cheese would taste like. <laughs> and then, like you just said, let's confuse the hell out of you because then you'll just keep noshing. Yep. And obviously, I mean, and I can get into this other thing from the hormonal uh, perspective from how it, it, it basically screws your leptin and ghrelin hormones, yep, which is, again, that. one's there, hey, we're trying to satiate. One should be telling you, hey, I'm satiated, I'm fine. But the other yeah. one's like, well, it throws it all off, man. Like they figured all this out. <laughs> yeah. And, and even this article, I think they mentioned, or maybe it's something else I was reading, 
you read this and you think, oh my God, these like what bastards. But yeah. the reality is they're, they're just, just making a product business. that you're going to like the most. It's almost like how many of us are addicted to our phones and chronically on it? Would we want Apple to make our phone like lag and not do very well? So we don't want to be on it all the time. Right. No, we, we want good, you know, call, we want things that we like, but you, you need to have this awareness because when you're st- trying or starting to make these lifestyle shifts, you need to know what you're fighting against to stop this, the, the guilt. Um, cause it's something I see so many people carry guilt and I'm like, you just don't know. I'm like, I would smash. I don't even, this is the one I always use the example. I was at a friend's house. This is probably a year ago. I'm literally talking nutrition, having the same conversation. And, uh, he had Reese's PCs, the little like M&M looking ones. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't even like peanut butter and I couldn't stop eating them because it's, <laughs> it's sugar. I, I don't like peanut butter but I'm eating it because of the sugar. I'm like, Ooh, sugar. I'm a sugar holic. I just don't want to stop. I know this. I understand it. I and you still did it anyway. my body. Yeah. That's why, you know what I do? I don't have that at my house. Yeah. I don't surround myself with temptation and thinking the best way I put it is this. You can't use willpower to practice moderation as an eating strategy. You can only use willpower to practice moderation as a buying strategy. That's- I like that. That's a good point. Now, how long have you been uh, teaching that to people? A, a few years. <laughs> 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 that's the only, that's the only way that it works. Um, you are going to, again, they've done the science, they've done the research. Um, you're going to overeat on those. And so many people surround themselves with temptation and they're trying to use willpower and it's just, you're eventually going to run out as everyone knows. Well, uh, let, let's be, let, let's, let's talk a little bit real quick here on the abundancy mindset, right? So we've just hinted at how there's companies out there already working against you and they're going to find a way to mess with your taste buds. So you become addicted and you keep consuming. And so that's there. That's basically an overabundancy of basically crap going into your body. Right. Um, well, let's, let's, let's flip it, right? Like I don't want to, I don't want to just let's stay on the negative here, but I want to take something out of that and do a complete flip of the coin uh, with you because I know you're going to click with me on this is like, let's flip this back over to the abundancy mindset. Cause I want to go full circle back to mindset here because I think it's important that people understand how you're helping people because guys, it's okay. Like he, he just admitted he, he, he goes through the same thing. Me, <laughs> dude, I got done uh, real quick. This weekend, I had the, uh, the annual Murph workout, the Murph challenge uh, in the CrossFit world on Saturday. And then yep. yesterday, I did a charity ride, a 65-mile road bike ride with 4,000 feet of climbing. Nice. <laughs> I'll go nice. around and back. So like, I was like, oh, my, everybody was like, wait a minute, you're going to go do that ride a, the day after Murph? And I did Murph with the full 20-pound weight vest as well. So nice. my quads were just like you know, 300 air squats with 20-pound weight vest. You know, it's like, yeah, my, my legs were already shot. That'll I was like, it. yeah. I like to punish myself. Let me see. I have the abundancy mindset, right? I'm going to get after it. Dude, halfway up this climb called Hawk Mountain, it's just, I, I was in the lowest gear. <laughs> and I think my speedometer said I was doing between 4.5 and 5 miles per hour. And I was like, <laughs> all right, this is pretty steep. <laughs> yeah. But I also wasn't ready for it. And my legs were already fried. But this is where the mind has to come into it. Like, I knew that if I stopped and got off my bike, it would be that much harder to get going again. Now, cool. granted, I've had years to program my mind to this, to get to that abundancy mindset of knowing that I'm capable of that much more. I could thank the firefighting background, which you know, we have talked about prior on the show. Mm-hmm. But like, how do you, I guess, help people like you just talked about here? We're being bombarded by by psychologists and very intelligent marketing and intelligent science going into these laboratories and food manufacturing. So everybody's hearing this and like, oh, I'm basically screwed. And it's like, no, dude, you're not screwed. Like we have choices. Well, how do you, so, how do you build people's mindset up? So, well, two things. First, let's address just the tangible uh, side and say, there is an abundance of incredibly delicious tasting, healthy food. Oh, hell yeah. So, first people have to realize it's not I'm giving up Reese's Pieces and I'm having raw broccoli, mm-hmm. right? We, 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 we don't ever measure it equally, right? We, we take something that we love that tastes amazing and we measure it against the most bland, boring, and it's like, it doesn't need to be that. There's, first, you have to accept the idea that there is incredibly delicious, healthy-tasting food. So, mm-hmm. and when you think about it and you're 
you're telling yourself, what am I really trying to do here? If I'm trying to lose weight, let's say it's like, well, you're going to try to eat a little bit less food, but you're going to do it through eating really incredibly tasting meals that are healthy. It's like, who wouldn't want to do that? Well, and real quick also, let's be careful with that less food thing too, right? The only reason, this is only if people are guilty of overeating. It's very hard to overeat good quality whole food. When you're, bot, when you're eating quality proteins, healthy fats, and good rich quality vegetables like cruciferous vegetables with avocado and olive oil and everything else, we brought up that whole leptin and ghrelin thing earlier. Guess what, right. dude? Like, they will actually be running like normal and they'll be like, wait a minute, I'm full. Like, yeah. I, I can eat a ton of food. I'm a pig. After that yeah. bike ride, I think I had like three dinners. But it was all good, clean food. And also, you know, I, I slammed down a steak. Trust me, I'm not eating two steaks. My body's right. like, whoa, I'm good, at least for another hour or two. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I prescribe to that, and I'm not necessarily a macro guy. Uh, yeah. So, yes, quality of food is going to dictate your – I'm sorry, quantity of food is going to dictate your weight. However, I see quality of food is going to dictate quantity. Yes. And I always use this with people. Imagine having a plate of the most amazing salmon – the most amazing, whatever vegetable you like. So I'm going to say asparagus and French fries. And it's this massive plate and I literally can't finish all, all of it. And we're sitting there socializing and I'm completely full and I love every single piece of that. What's going to eventually happen? Where am I going to start nibbling mm -hmm. the French fries? Yeah. Almost everybody. And it's like, so where are those excess, excess calories coming in? Honestly, 99% of the time it's from processed foods. You're not going to overeat as you alluded to. Uh, when you're full, you're not going to reach for more asparagus. So the body is fairly, I think, self-regulating, and it doesn't have to be this mathematical equation where everything has to be tracked. Um, again, so there's you know the abundance mindset of you're getting to eat liberally lots of foods that are healthy and tasty. Um, so, yeah, I kind of fall into that and that side of the coin on that. Yeah, and real quick, you brought broccoli. Guys, okay. <laughs> Garlic, hey, infused, garlic infused <laughs> olive oil. You throw a few drops into your water when you're steaming your broccoli. It infuses that garlic olive oil flavor into the broccoli. And then when you go and serve that steamed broccoli, you take out your cheese grater. You take a mm -hmm. nice, high-quality, rich Parmesan, and you shred that puppy up over. Grind some uh, Himalayan sea salt onto that. Boom. That's all I'm going to yep. say. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's, it's so funny because I, I love using broccoli because if you gave me raw broccoli, it's like the one – it's boring. Like two, two vegetables I really don't like. I mean, I'll muscle broccoli down. I don't eat olives. I think they're terrible. I can't like the taste. Oh, my broccoli, girlfriend hates olives too. I, I, I wish I, I liked them. them. Yeah. Oh, I hate them. Well, I mean, but I go see, olives, a lot of people oil. don't like olives, but they like olive oil. So yeah, it's I, interesting. I like olive oil. Yeah. Yeah, but the olives or capers, I can't do. But, but broccoli, like broccoli I like to use because raw broccoli to me is – the epitome of like, gosh, this just like tastes like you can tell you're just eating like earthy dirt, like, you know, like, <laughs> God, what, like, I'm, I'm eating little miniature trees here. Like it's so, but like you said, uh, I remember the best broccoli I've ever had and it was just, it was roasted with some olive oil, lots of lemon juice, fresh basil. It was almost like a little pesto on there mm. and it was incredible. And it's like, you can't weigh, slamming. yeah, you can't weigh giving up Reese's peanut butter cups to raw broccoli. You got to weigh it against something that actually is going to taste good. Well, and again, I think one of the, uh, we, we could geek out on nutrition and food and everything else, but what the biggest thing I have to teach people about whole food uh, supplementation, and as, as the sad part is I have to say supplementation because a lot of people <laughs> are so manufactured that I need to start teaching them to supplement the whole food back in until mm -hmm. we can fully migrate them over because we've just been programmed by television and marketing and really good psychology that making good whole food is time consuming. Right. And it's not, it's just, we've been listening or watching years of commercials saying, Oh, TV dinners were faster. Oh my God. I, can't, I used to eat TV dinners I know. when I was a kid. Right. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. That was like, that excited me a, a little cardboard thingy with like plastic or foil over it. And you nuked your, I'm like, really? <laughs> I, I, I ate that crap. The um, texture. And like the like hungry man, really? Yeah. That was disgusting. Uh, oh my god! The but texture. The point, yeah, exactly. But that, again, mouthfeel. They they they're programming all this mm -hmm. stuff in. But the whole point here is like we just have to reverse the programming or re reprogram yourself. That's all we're talking about. And I think for most people listening to this or watching this on the YouTube feed, will be guys. Luke's not rocking some serious rocket science here. I'm not either. We're just trying to help you guys understand that 
you got to start taking a step in the back to the right direction. We all were on the right direction at one point in different periods of our lives. And we've had good years and bad years. And maybe some of these listeners, our listeners right now, um, have had a, maybe just are, are already in a good year right now, but you're having those cheat days or you're having that bad, that, that bad Las Vegas trip. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, dude, exactly. it's okay. Because yeah. I think part of this is that if you are 85% of the time rock solid and you have a couple of, uh, I don't know, putting life into living type of uh, things like Vinnie Twitterich says. It's like, yep. hey, man, I'm just putting life into living. You'll be fine. It's totally. okay. It doesn't have to be 100%. It probably won't be, again, because of the, you know, the marketing, the temptation. Um, it's also what, too extreme. I think some people, you're pretty much guaranteed a breaking point. If you go 100%, you're eventually going to burn out. Yeah. You got to allow yourself a little fudge factor. Yeah. And you can get away with it. That's the thing. And I, I, I did a video the other day, a Facebook live, and I was talking about people are making macro decisions based on micro actions. And, you know, they make that one little mess up and you think, oh, I blew it. It's all over. And you're living in this little, you're making decisions from this, you know, micro experience when you need to extrapolate it out to the macro. You know, was that meal really that bad for the week or let's go all the way out to the month? Or, you know, what's your overall nutrition been looking like in the last two months? And these are where we need to start making some changes and some adjustments on what we're actually doing. So, you know, don't let that little one little hiccup throw you off because realistically, you can probably get away with it. I think that's well said. So for our hey, listeners. Uh, real quick, I want to yeah. touch on, you, you asked about the abundance mindset. Yes. So here, here's something that I talk about with, I, I talk to clients about that I think is helpful. All right. If you're trying to make this shift into cleaning up your health and fitness and you're struggling, you need to take a look in your own life and realize you've have mastery somewhere else or you've developed mastery somewhere else. And if you can do it there, you can translate it over. Because oftentimes you're talking to a fitness coach, like take someone like myself. I was literally having this conversation with a client not too long ago. I go, look, man, this is easy for me. I go, this is my area. This is my zen. This is my, you know, I have mastery here. I go, but I'm having to do the same type of work in other areas. So we all have our kind of area. We, oftentimes it's in work um, where we have mastery. Um, and knowing that, you can take those same tools and you can transfer them over and you can develop it somewhere else. I think that's a powerful point that you just made. Thank you for bringing that back up because, so again, guys, listen, what he's really talked about here is that each and every single one of you have a strength, but we're always programmed to focus on the weaknesses. Like for yeah. example, oh, I, I have to go and work on that weakness or I have to go work, I have to work, spend more time on that. And it's funny because the e-guide that I give away on my website, I have, to, I have to overhaul that thing. It's been a couple of years. I want to freshen it up. But one of the books that I highly recommend is called Strengths Finder 2.0, yeah. right? Big, big fan of that. Dude, you, so you, take, you, you, take their little, you take their little online exam thingy and it's, you know, it's one of those advanced, you know, whatever. The whole point is you get this, it spits out the results and it tells you your top five strengths. Mm -hmm. And then you go back into the book and you don't read the whole book. You just focus on, those four or five chapters, those four or five strengths that are your top strengths. Because especially as adults, but this does relate back to being kids, but it's like, guys, like you could spend a ton of time working on your weaknesses or you could figure out what are you crushing it at? Lead with that. And then what you just said, Luke, is, okay, why am I great at that? And how can I translate that to other areas of my life and take that same level of commitment and dedication and mastery and just reapply that to help build that, uh, that new chapter? Like, like you, for right. example, you crush it on the fitness side, the training side. You got the mindset piece. You, you got the podcast as well. But it's like, okay, well, you, like you and I, we're trying to build something bigger. We're trying to right. build yeah, yeah. a business with purpose. We're trying to build our brand online. Like you were always live great lifestyle. Now you're trying to build some branding behind your name as well. Right. So dude, guess what? To the listeners guys, like Luke, Luke is going through this right now just from a business and a marketing and branding thing yeah. that not, not obviously the fitness thing. Yeah. And I get, I tell people all the time, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like the, <laughs> the level of frustration and time waste and like banging my head against the wall. Um, it's, it parallels again, the same struggle that someone may have, um, coming into a nutrition and a, you know, a fitness lifestyle shift, you know, trying to write articles when writing's not very, um, easy for me to do. Uh, and, and you know, it's like, well, you need to come up with tools and resources. So 
if we were speaking on the nutrition side, when somebody says, oh, I'm not a very good cook, it doesn't taste very good, so I don't like it. Cool, let's maybe consider outsourcing that. Where are the healthy restaurants in your area? Who, what about a food delivery service? On my end, I could say the same thing, like, hey, maybe we should try some voice dictation instead of sitting down at the keyboard and getting angry that it doesn't come out, yep. right? So again, you have mastery somewhere, and you just need to start looking at like, well, what were those pieces that were useful for me to develop this here? And how can I kind of shift it and translate it that way? And once you do that, it can be a little bit easier. And then once you get to the point where you've done it, it's pretty easy. And it's, it is, that's the, the lifestyle. Like, how do we make that lifestyle shift? Well, you got to get there. No, I love it, man. Like, I, I'm over on your livegreatlifestyle.com site now, too. And it's like everything we're talking about, guys, again, you can go to either, either of his sites to learn more about him. And uh, I, I believe you're eventually combining everything into one home, right? Yeah. So, yeah, like, so. I love this statement you have on your site. Transform your life through the power of health and fitness. Forget the good life. Live a great one. So, again, back to what his point here on the abundance mindset is, dude, you're already living a great life in other areas. Reapply it. Okay, let's mm -hmm. hack that. And if you need help, you got somebody like Luke. He's just he's going to help you dig down into those layers, right? Peel back the layers of the onion and help you realize that. And then if if obviously if this is what you're working on your health and your fitness and your conditioning, then great. He can help you transplant that over and start making some real gains. Um and man, I tell people all the time too, like I said, I know everyone goes into it because of the physique, but I love asking people this. So of course, like who doesn't want to have a good physique? I get that. But let me ask you this. If you're the last person on the planet, you probably still go work out, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to, I'm going to go lift weights. If literally yeah. I'm the last I'll have a couple of rest days probably, yeah. you know, you know, we're going <laughs> to, yeah, there might be mean, some more R and R days, but you're going to get bored. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to enjoy how you feel. Mm -hmm. And it really is. I mean, that transform your life. Once you can take the idea that all of those other things that you're passionate about that you enjoy, like t spending time with your family, going on vacations, it's going to up level. Uh, I mean, you're going to enjoy, you know, if you go to Machu Picchu, you're going to take in the sights and get better photos. If you're not sucking wind the whole time and all you're thinking about is, holy shit, I'm tired. My legs are burning yep. versus the guy who the hike wasn't too bad. And you're really getting to, you know, take in the spirit and the energy of that area. So things you know, I really truly believe it's a, it's a, your health and fitness are a fundamental pillar in your life. And without it, none of the other pieces are going to click fully. Well said. Well, if you uh, can't remember back to episode 19, it's okay. I'll refresh you. Uh, we've, we've built a consistency thing here and you, you just really close on a really strong statement, but with everything happening right now with your brand and where you're going next, um, we always close the episodes with the co-host, you, uh, really leaving behind just a powerful big picture message. And it could relate back to what you just said, or just say, hey, guys, if you're going to be following Luke in the coming months as he merges his websites and his brand continues to grow, like what is that higher level message that you're trying to leave behind to really anybody who's starting to follow you or learn more about you, you know, beyond just, hey, yeah, I'm a coach and I could train you and blah, blah, right. blah. But it's like, what is your encompassing message you're trying to put out to the world? Um, I mean, I really did just say it. Um, and the idea of that live great lifestyle, I'm a huge believer, um, in the, you know, the ripple effect of being healthy and fit. Uh, it's not just a physique, but I, I really think you're not operating your life at the highest degree if you're not health, healthy and fit. Um, so if you're coming into it from a weight loss standpoint, that's great. That can get you in the door, but just hold on to the idea that you're going to up level honestly, the whole thing. So that's, that's really the message, message of the live great lifestyle. Um, you know, brand, from a branding standpoint, it was originally live great fitness, but I don't want people to just think it's not just about your fitness. It is about your life. I mean, and about the energy you wake up with as a dad, I mean, how you communicate to your wife. I think these are all things that are going to be impacted by your health and fitness. So that's the overarching theme. I love that, man. Well, hang tight here. I'll give you a proper goodbye once we close okay. out the show here. So again, guys, I mean, I'm just going to reshare uh, his site here for you guys. Again, that's the Live Great Lifestyle. That's Luke, man. Make sure you're following him. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. He's on Facebook. He's everywhere. If you can't figure it out, just go to the website and he'll, sh he'll have all the links there for you guys. But again, this is what we're talking about, right? His website says it all. Life's better, healthy, and fit, okay? So we've talked about this before all the time on every single episode, Keep living the fired up epic life, guys. This is what it's all about. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. 
All right, man, you're clear of the podcast. So All right. I leave the cool, video man. feed for a little extra nuggets. So yeah, yeah. I like to keep you two more raw. <laughs> you know what's you know what's funny? I did a podcast the other day and as you know, we spoke and talking about starting mine and what I like about yours is that it is just conversational. Mm-hmm. Um I did one the other day where I was like, shit, man, everything we talked about before and after was like the gold. Cause everybody kind of, <laughs> everybody kind of dropped, you know, both of us, myself as well. I kind of came one on presenter mode um, as, as if I were standing in front of, you know, a group of 30 people and trying to be a little more professional. Well, and, that's like, that's why I, I love that. That's why to you today, man, I'm like, let's hit record right away because yeah. the last three episodes, it never fails. I start shooting the shit with people mm-hmm. and next thing you know, it's four or five minutes when we could have been recording and we've already lost some great nuggets. And I'm I like, agree. The, the natural state of communication and connecting, like when you set people, when you, when you're at ease and you're just, you're, you're in that flow state, you know, right. it's, you're in that flow state. So it's like record that shit. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you set it up nicely in that, again, you have a really good conversational tone. You can tell it's not scripted. I had no idea what we we're going to talk about. We didn't even talk biomechanics or posture, which is fine. Um, you know, the problem, the problem with that is that can't visually see it. I, I feel it restricts, it may restrict me. And then I feel like, oh, I have to follow. Oh, I got to keep bringing it back. And, and right. my earlier episodes, I'll admit it, man. It's been like, oh, well, uh, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle. So I'm like, I will try yeah. and swing it back towards one of those three domains. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. If, <laughs> if we like- just talk about health the whole time, mm-hmm. we talk about health. I mean, if there's no business, so what? We'll save it for another episode. Right. That's Again, I like what you're doing. Um, it reminds me. So part of the reason I think like Joe Rogan's podcast is so successful is obviously being long format, mm. but he gets He's people very to drop format. their, oh, did I just lose you? Uh, he no. gets people to drop their, you know, their guard. And if you ever, I think the greatest uh, example of that is go watch Joe Rogan interview Lance Armstrong and go watch Oprah interview Lance Armstrong and you get PR version bullshit right? Where you're trying to save face and look good for the American people. Oprah's get, full of bullshit. Sorry. What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, no, I mean, even like Lance Armstrong, his answers. Oh, and yeah. Then you, then you listen to him on Joe Rogan and it's like, wow, he like dropped his guard and he, you know, he got real with it. And that's what I think people are. Well, after. I think that's part of it too, right? Like get people comfortable. And if you, if you just treat them like another human being and just not another guest, you know, right. that's why, like, I literally people like, oh, I was a guest on the live. I'm like, no, dude, you were a co-host. We're right. e- I, I mean, yeah, in the end, I kind of have full authority, but I'm like, I want, I'm trying to teach people that I want the co-host. I don't want the guest. I don't want it to be just a big interview. I want us to have a conversation. Yeah. And I, I, if also, and I want them to throw questions back at me, right? It's creating right. a two-way communication. Whether or not you be, you know, launch your own podcast or not, and if this rubs off, I mean, because I've gotten great feedback from other podcasters, they they like the format. So yeah, I, and I, you're I definitely it do. Yeah. So no, it's just a matter it, of playing the long game. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, I think about something as a fan when I'm listening to, and this wouldn't really relate to me, but when you get somebody who is has a little bit of celebrity or you know who is an influencer, mm. um, it is interesting to just know. Um, like, I just kind of want to know what they're thinking about things. Yeah. Even if it's off topic, it's like, oh, that's interesting to see their thought on maybe well, it's, it's like politics. when I brought on a fellow Cali boy, uh, Brian Smith, the UGG founder, UGG Boots. Oh, I didn't know you did. Cool. Oh, yeah, dude. Go back. Look at his episodes, man. Like, that guy is still snowboarding and surfing to this day. And he's in, a, I think he's like 70 or something. Nice. And I, I had no idea he had, fe- he had sold UGG Boots like 15 years ago. Uh, but he lives in SoCal. So. Okay. Yeah, so that guy's going to have some interesting stuff regardless. I don't care what direction you take it. Yeah. Anybody to me that's successful on high level, I don't care. If, like You could be a high-level dentist, yeah. right? And you probably have an interesting perspective on a lot of different things. The cool thing was I can't stand Ugg boots. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, think, I think they're ugly as hell. Uh, I, I, boots, right? I, didn't, I didn't bring them on because of the boots. I mean, yeah, there's some name recognition there and there's some Google results, blah, blah, blah. But right. I brought him on because of uh, what's his name? The fire chief from Thrive. He knew Brian. And after okay. I brought him on, he's like, hey, man, like, let me connect you with anybody. And I'm like, well, yeah. And he said, oh, well, I, I know Brian Smith. I'm like, and? He's like, Brian Smith, the founder of Uggs. I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, yeah, we were in a mastermind together. Same oh, thing, cool. networking. Yeah. And You're like, Brian, oh, those ugly boots? Yeah, and Brian, and Brian Smith is just, he's, now that he's sold his company, he's been building 
his speaker experience, right? So he needs okay. to get more exposure, more marketing out there. But just like you said, he was like, hey man, he's like, I really enjoyed that show. He's like, definitely a different format. I like the conversational format. So, yeah. because again, he gets to relax and he's, he's in his home office. I'm over here and it's just, it just flowed, man. It was a good show. Well, so. I think people, I know for myself, um, I mean, where I feel best, um, again, if I were to try to like say create content, writing's a challenge. I can do Facebook lives and, and create YouTube videos. Oh yeah, I can do I that do, too. I do okay <laughs> at that. But where honestly, like I really enjoy it the most and I think about where's flow for me, it's those initial um, training sessions with clients where I'm really doing a lot of education and it's a little bit conversational and that's where I think like the nuggets for me come out. So. Yeah. And that's why I've really started to fall more in love with, with video because even though like Facebook live is big right now, that'll eventually have its high and it's low. And that's right. why I keep telling people keep pushing YouTube because that's a platform that will always be there and you can embed it into your website and you can backlink everything like this. This will go to my YouTube channel and then I'll have it embedded into your, you know, show, right. show blog post. So it's like, it's, YouTube isn't going anywhere. There's right. still a huge platform. Facebook's on a high right now, but I'm like, guys, don't give up on the video because like you just said, you do all this dumping of information and education. Every client doesn't remember everything. So right. if you yeah. can record it or from time to time record one of those educational sessions and then put that out there, that's good quality, real raw right. content. And also it gives them something to go back and listen to. Like, oh man, I forgot what he told me that day. Oh, that's okay. I recorded or whatever. Just right. something to think about. That's so. generally where most of the videos, and it's funny because I have a lot of them as like unlisted because they're just short little tutorials that I, again, I have to create for, I mean, if I'm working one-on-one -on -one in person, it's unique. Like here's the, no, you have to stretch this specific hip flexor. So here's the video tutorial yeah. on how to do it. But when I look at like my YouTube channel, YouTube channel, which is really nothing, um, I don't have any of the like backlinking and description. It's not there. Like I need to go in and, and yeah, but it's, you can always, you can always get that tweak later. The point is right. you're at least, my thing is this, we, we fall into this place of uh, a paralysis by analysis, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? I'm like you, dude, I don't care what my YouTube channel is doing. I'm just pushing content. Okay. Cause like once this is up, I'll be over 200 videos on my YouTube channel and a million wow. until I launched the podcast. I hadn't been doing, I'd fallen off the, the video curve for a little while. And then right around episode 50 or 51 is when I decided to start doing the video edition. And I, I launched a Zoom platform to start doing that. So right. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm already recording an episode anyway. Why not say screw Skype and just do it through Zoom? Because then right. I've got audio and video and then I can... I can double, double my platforms. I, I think also from like a conversational aspect or something about seeing you too. Yeah. You know, you're such a handsome man. And all. Oh, you as well, <laughs> sir. So I mean, but yeah. the, the point is it's like, so, and a lot of people do like doing the Skype, but then famous people like Vinny Tortorich, he's got a very successful show. He is constantly like, Oh, oh hold on. Turn your camera off in the middle of the episode. Turn your camera off. Yeah. The, the, the Skype signal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Vinny, he's the only person that he's, I've had him on my show like three times now. I heard he's, that actually. He still wants to use Skype. I'm like, dude, Vinny, you're killing me. He's like, oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like new technology. I'm like, Vinny, you yourself are frustrated with Skype. You are the <laughs> yeah, only person. I was like, you got to change it. <laughs> I was like, that's use funny. Zoom. Like, at least use it as a guest with me and then I'll show you how to do it. And you'll right. stop having performance issues. Like you and I today had a couple of like lags it's but probably that, on my end. I'm not, I'm, if I, and it, guess, happens. it happens, I'm Wi-Fi. but it's way worse in the Skype world okay. because you, Zoom is being used by very large corporations. So Zoom as a company needs to make sure their shit's together. Skype is, yeah, it's Skype. <laughs> right. Are you, are you hardlined in? See, I'm on Wi-Fi. So no, I'm Wi-Fi. You're Wi-Fi too. I could hardline. My router's right down on the floor. I just, <laughs> uh, I have a minimalist, like super ultralight travel laptop. So I don't have a hard jack port. All I have to do is go out and buy a USB port that hold that you can actually do a USB connected uh, hardline okay. and then I can hardline it. But I'm literally the router's right here and the laptop's right here. So I'm like, Okay, I, I don't think I'm losing that much signal. Right, I should probably move my router, but I'm like terrified to unplug that thing because it's like I'm just gonna blow it all up and I'll have to call and it'll never work again. Eh, all <laughs> right. On a side note, are you using the Heil? Uh, no, you know I Your have microphone? a. No, I know it looks like that. It's it looks a, like my Heil PR40. Well, it's so I'm. I am curious how to how the audio sounds on this. It's an Audio Technica. It was like seventy five bucks. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, yeah, it looks. Pretty yeah. similar, right? Yeah. 
Um, oh, that, yeah. this is like a, this is like a two three hundred dollar microphone. <laughs> right. No, that's that's what I that's what I was saying. I, I know that is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, right. but I mean, admittedly, I don't travel. I, I don't travel with this. I travel with an audio technica 2100. I got a couple, well, you, you, you saw the mics that I travel with. So, yeah. um, no, in the end that's better than an, like, there's podcasters using their freaking iPhone headset. Okay. Yeah. I'm already uh, way ahead of a lot of people. <laughs> I was listening to somebody the other day that there was two things and I was like, wow, this is not good. Again, I like the conversational aspect that you do. Yeah. And you could, I could like hear the papers rustling like yeah. as yeah. they're going through like their, I'm like, dude, just have a conversation with people. Like this is not hard. Yeah. Uh, Especially. And, and, and then, and then if they lose, lose track of where they're at, mm-hmm. you, it, it, it's, it's so chunky. It's like, you guys are like, Oh, hold on a second. I'm like, dude, just, are you listening? Like have a freaking right. conversation, man. Right. If you really need a checklist, that's fine, but don't, don't stay glued to your checklist. Well, I even think, you know, what's nice about how, again, you're doing more of a conversational tone. I think it's like, it's not even crazy to be like, oh shit, you know what? I totally forgot. I wanted to ask you this because yeah. you're like, oh, that's just, is how normal people talk yeah. when you're around somebody <laughs> versus. And I've tried it. I've, I've tried, you know what, man, I really, I, I've had a couple of really cool co-hosts. I've like, oh man, you know, I got a couple of really good questions for them. And then I would write them down and then I would lose the questions. And right. then in the end, the show goes a whole different way anyway. And I said, you know what, if I was meant to ask them something, I would have asked them. Oh, well, you know, yeah. I just think it's interesting people's insights. Um, I mean, again, I, I use Joe Rogan as a good example. Joe's a great example, man. He's, I mean, my girlfriend hates podcasts, but she'll do, she'll listen to anything that Joe makes. Yeah. And it's crazy because he's all over, um, on who he's, you know, who he brings on. Um, but it's like, if you have an interest, if you have somebody who's done something, essentially, yeah. they're going to have some interesting things to, to talk about regardless. Exactly. I mean, I mean, that's where he starts talking about aliens and, you know, uh, flat earth. And all of a sudden I'm like, dude, you have this guy who has, who, yeah, I listened to one the other day where I was like, this guy has a really cool business and what he's doing. And he, Joe took him on to flat earth for like 40 minutes. And I'm like, go back well, to this stuff. And that's where, uh, that's your opportunity to reach out to the guy and say, Hey man, I really enjoyed your Joe, but I, I feel you guys could have dug in on these other areas. Would you ever consider <laughs> yeah. coming on my show? Because idea. that's all I do. I tweet half of my co-hosts. I've literally landed them thanks to Twitter. Yeah. I, I listened to you saying that cause I hardly, I don't, I hardly use Twitter at all. I'm like, I'm, still, I'm, like, I, I'm still one of those people. I'm like, I don't get it. Why are people If you follow here? my feed, the only thing I do is when I finish listening to like a podcast episode. So in the podcast app, I'll hit share that episode. And then I tag the host of that show, like Vinny. That's why Vinny loves me because I'm the only one who tweets his episodes. Right. So he, I've now been on his show. And so it, that helps me with my downloads because he gets like a million a month and I don't get mm-hmm. that. Yeah, not, not yet. <laughs> he's also been doing it for four or five years. So, right. um, and also he's now recently gotten a bump because he's the guest on Adam Carolla a lot. So now uh, the Adam Carolla bump has bled over into the Vinny bump. And then I'm trying to get something off the Vinny bump. Yeah. We also keep cross pollinating. Yeah. Well, um, I'll, bring you, I'll bring you on and get, get the, uh, exactly. the, live the fuel bump. <laughs> there you go. But that's the point. It's like, also yeah. I tell guys like, I try and do the Twitter thing with just the podcast episodes because I'm already listening to it anyway, and it's a quick button. I hit share. But if there's somebody good on that episode, I track down what their Twitter name is, and I tag them in that too because I'm hoping that they retweet that. Because right. okay. I took the extra couple of seconds to make sure that I typed in their tag name and the host of that show's tag name so they both know that I'm talking about them. Interesting. And if they're yeah. really, really good, I'll try and message them saying, I love that episode, by the way. Clearly, obviously, I tweeted it. If I would love to have you on my show, some respond, some don't. So right. the point is, I'm just starting that request process because sometimes people answer right away. Others, you just got to stay on them. It's like the sale, it's like sales protocol, right? You got to right. follow up and follow yeah. up and follow up. So yeah. I listen to uh, you talking about that. That's interesting. Yeah. Like I so said, Twitter to me still is like the ether of I'm like, oh, click, what happened? Yeah. I don't have time <laughs> for Twitter. I don't. So, like, literally, I just. I, like all of a sudden the other day I had like, I had 30 pending tweets from people because something got reposted and then everybody's commenting on it. And I'm like, Oh my God. I was like, delete. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like I said, it's become just a vehicle for me just to show respect to other podcasts that I'm listening to and then maybe get a little bleed over off of, cause I, that's the only way I'm learning about these people. When I listen to healthy, right. healthy fit business type shows like Vinny's or, uh, I think there's like one or two other shows I listen to. Um, I, I listen to who their co-hosts are and what their backgrounds are. I'm like, Ooh, I'd love to get that person on my show. Right. And, and, and then go with a different angle the way we like to do. So, yep. 
Uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's what it is. And I'll keep sharing best practices. You know how I am. Yeah, no, like I said, I, I love, uh, I love your style of it, man. Yeah. I like really, if you're, uh, if you're staying on the healthy fit side of things, definitely check out fit fluential radio. Okay. I've heard of it. Haven't listened like, to it. Yeah. Fit fluential is all one word because I get a lot of great, uh, content off of that episode of the other show as well. Okay. And actually, thanks to me listening to that show and tweeting one of their episodes, the co-host, Kevin Cottrell, came on my show. And then, because he's a follower of the famous Dr. Jack Cruz, the neurologist, mm -hmm. um, like Dr. Jack Cruz is like the crazy like mitochondrial hacker. So instead yeah. of biohacking, he's the mitohacker. That. Yeah. yeah. That, that dude, nobody has touched his downloads. Like when Jack went live on my show, my download spike went like within 20, that was the first episode ever to go over a thousand downloads within 24 hours. Would you equate a download in the sense of like a subscriber to YouTube or no? Kind of. Yeah. Because, well, see, here's the thing though. Someone can download it and not subscribe to your show. Right. right. So they can download my episode just cause they found it. That doesn't mean number one, they listened to it. Right. And number two, did they subscribe to my show? So a YouTube subscriber, they can watch your video and not subscribe. But if you get right. a notification, you've subscribed. Like I wish the podcast world would send me notifications that people, I, don't, I have no idea how many subscribers I have. I have There's downloads. no way to check that? Oh, that's interesting. I haven't, I have, I've been so damn busy, I haven't been able to figure that out. I don't know if that okay. is something that I can like, track down. Um, it's not easily Googleable. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't really tracked that down yet. If there's a way if to Google get that, can't answer it for you, it's impossible. <laughs> to find yeah. It. And maybe I'm missing something from the data segment and I need to kind of like dig some deeper into the data, but admittedly I'm just put, I'm just putting in the reps, man. I'm just throwing the shows out there and just letting it grow naturally and organically. And if I can, if I can track that data down, <laughs> awesome. Um, but I just don't care because I'm not even at a one year anniversary yet. And I'm just building that solid consistency. So people mm -hmm. know that I'm not messing around. So. I think that's important. I mean, that's where, you know, that's where I've struggled is that consistent action in, yeah. in that sense. So and yeah. it's being patient, right? It's yeah. like, Hey man, it's a new show. Give yourself yeah. a year. And then if you still got downloads and you still, you're still getting great co-hosts coming on, keep going. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and it's, it's interesting because that takes away from not, not to say you don't need to do all the, all the other stuff. But I'm like, that's the minutia that just drives me nuts. And again, obviously like we can't, you can't compare anybody to, to like a Rogan cause he had, you know, the celebrity following to begin with, yeah. but it's like, I don't think that guy's thinking about any of that shit. Right. No. And like, he's, he's just, just having conversations. Yeah. He's um, being himself. Adam Carolla is being himself. Um, Vinny's the only difference with Vinny was nobody knew who he was. That's why he launched his podcast. Cause he eventually wanted to sell a book. So he needed to build an audience cause nobody, he wasn't, he wasn't viral. Nobody knew about Vinny Toitorich. He was just a trainer, a private trainer to the stars. Right. So like his, his uh, co-author of his book told him, Hey, uh, maybe we should consider launching a podcast or something. Cause nobody who the hell you are. So if you, if you write a book, you're not selling it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So that's why they decided to launch a podcast and start building brand awareness and building who they are and build a following. And then when they got to launch a, sh a show, they had an audience to potentially sell it to and share it and yada, yada, yada. To your point, Joe Rogan already had a following. Adam Carolla only had already had a following. Uh, hell, the founder of LinkedIn uh, just launched his own podcast a few weeks ago. So, oh, interesting. yeah, so like it's it's not a shrinking market. So right, yeah. And, and for your website, that's the other thing you got to put in the time. I mean, a year's worth of blog articles just from my episodes alone. Because I'm like you, I don't have time to write. So I can't, I, I'm terrible at writing traditional blog posts because I just yeah. don't want to do it. Like if you it's, look at It's my, not a valuable a, use of my time. <laughs> I have the episodes, which is technically a blog page, but it's called episodes. And then I have the right. traditional blog page and consistently two episodes every week going out. But in the regular blog, I don't I think I published something a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. So. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm a contributing writer for the Huffington Post. I can put something out anytime I want. Yeah. But again, it's just not a, I'm not seeing the return on it. It's not a valuable use of my time. Um, it's everybody, no offense, but like I see that more and more. I just had a guy on the other day. He's like, oh yeah, I write for Forbes. I write for Huffington. I write for Fortune. Yeah. I'm like, good for you, dude. And he's right. like, but, but even he admitted, he's like, admittedly though, I haven't gotten a lot of stuff out of it and he just gets to slap those logos up on his page yeah. i'm like you know what if it, if it helps establish you from the social cred and you right. can tie yourself to those bigger names 
Cool. Well, and you know, it's funny. I, I put out an article. Uh, I mean, I have, I have had, uh, I mean, I've gotten a few clients like, cause I wrote some articles on low back pain. I'm yeah. going um, to I'm linking my YouTube videos in there. And I, uh, I had somebody the other day reach out and they're like, Oh cool. I didn't realize that you wrote this. And I'm like, yeah, I wrote all of these happening. Like every time I po- post it yeah. and it's like, really, it'd probably be better if that it would probably would have been read more if it came from, on, on, and when I say post and I'm putting it on Facebook, if it would have yeah. been from Luke Depron.com. Well, here's right. the best part. What you could technically do is you could build a portal or a page into your site and backlink all of their articles to your site and say, here's my Huffington listings, uh, okay. right? That's interesting. And you could, and then if, when people click on Huffington articles, right? And they just see how many freaking articles you've ever written. Right. And then from your keyword perspective, what they read is whatever you want it to read. But when they click on it, it will go to Huffington Post. Right. But it's your kind of like you create a database, like a, a oh interesting, okay, like yeah, a, I'm, like a, like a, you you basically you you index list all of your articles on your site, right? Because I do have my obviously I take those exact same articles and I put them on my site, but I'm not linking out to Huffington Post because I can oh I can, yeah, dude, you got to link out to Huffington Post. Google wants that, right? That's why in my show notes I backlink everything to your content. I, I want the whole point of Google is Google wants to know when people go into your site, it can easily pass through your entire site, keep Google happy, but also it likes to see other sites connecting to other sites. Right. It loves to see a flow state happening there. So if right. you already got your content, great, but why not tag to Huffington? Right. Cause you it's might the same get content. A, I'm a lot of you might get a visitor <laughs> saying, Hey man, I, I want to go look at what he wrote for Huffington, even though it's the same damn thing. It's on your site, but they don't know that. Right. So great. If you have somebody who's like, Oh, I want to read his Huffington article. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then okay. Huffington sees Huffington sees the clicks coming from your site to their site as well. Oh, interesting. So their marketing people will see that you're driving traffic directly to them. And that just okay. also, it, it's, it's, it's creating that full circle. Yep. Okay. So, plus if I went to your site and I see a Huffington library, that's cool. That right. shows you've been putting out a lot of content, right. even though it's on my site too. Like you could say, read yeah, on. It's, it's basically just my blog is, I just put my blog on Huffington Post. That's all yeah. I've done. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. That's interesting. Yeah, why not? I mean, consider it. So, I geek out on this crap. So, see, that, see I'll be honest. It's, <laughs> no, I, I actually love this conversation, and, and uh, you'll probably be getting some messages from me occasionally. Yeah, man. This, is the, this is the shit I hate. I mean, this is the stuff that when I'm like, this is, I'm an, uh, I'm a person to person. I'm um, EQ, not IQ. And yeah. this is the stuff when I start getting into it, it's like, wait, what? Like makes, I'm me, with wanna, you. makes me want to basically office space my computer. Actually, here's a business idea I have. You get a van and you get old like fax machines and laptops and you, and you have baseball bats and you drive around to uh, corporate offices and you invite those people out and That's let them awesome. go to town. <laughs> but uh, nearly there, there's going to be a generation gap there unless they remake office space too. Yeah, um, it's because it's already, it's already fallen back to our generation or older because uh, a lot of the millennials don't know what the hell, uh, the new, the newer millennials don't know what office space is. And that's true. Or like a fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. There's that, well, no, faxes are still being used, but now oh, everything's okay. being translated to digital content. Like now you send it to a fax number, it comes through as an email. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm with you. I like that. Yeah. Though. That's pretty good. Yeah. Cause so. I do, I do get hung up on all of that stuff. I'm like, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, you could like your tagline could be like, Frustrated with your cubicle life? Yeah. <laughs> Step outside, go off a space on this shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've literally, the only thing that stopped me from snapping a computer in half is knowing that the financial like pain of having to replace it. But I've yeah. like, like, ugh, cause it's not, it's not intuitive to me. Um, not to say I won't figure it out. Uh, but it's, definitely, um, kind of like the strength finders. What's the, like the wealth dynamics test. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I've learned a lot over the last few years of like where my skill set lies, where these shortcomings are. And uh, I'm definitely trying to push into a world that isn't as um, intuitive to me as far yeah. as, like I said, in person, people to people and great. Uh, and then all of a sudden. Hey, it, it's, it's like everything you and I are doing uh, similar, but differently. It's like, dude, like I I'm with you. I like the person to person. One of my goals is to eventually start building myself into the paid speaker uh, demographic because then yeah. I'm speaking to groups of people live and I'd rather be hanging out on a stage and shooting the shit with people like right. I do on the microphone on a podcast. So you just, did you, you just spoke somewhere, right? How'd that go? That was cool. Um, yeah. Like I said, I, I literally, my girlfriend's like, you're going to go speak at an event for 30 minutes and you don't have anything written down. 
And I said, if I've got to write it down, then I'm not a good speaker. That's right. how I look at it. I should be able to just roll with it. And there's a confidence thing there and I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just rocked it. So, um, and I, I have a rough cut. Like they actually had an extra tripod set up. So they were grabbing each speaker's iPhone and setting up like oh. the iPhone for me. So I have a recording of it. That's cool. Um, so I'm actually going to probably republish that as a YouTube video. Nice. Um, I, I think I post, I posted it on Facebook as well. Yeah. That's where I think I saw it. Yeah. So I just had a blast with it. We were just, it was a chair. It was a charity event. It was the guy who launched uh, MapCon, the mid Atlantic podcast conference last year. That's how I met the guy. And then he was calling this dream con uh, because okay. dream, uh, dream, his podcast is called the dreamers podcast. And this was to give back to um, a charity called give kids the world, which partners with Disney world. Okay. And like basically it's kind of like a make a wish, but more Disney theme. Okay. So like that charity helps kids with whatever is going on in their lives and then sends them on trips to Disney. Cool. So, so was what was cool. your, so what was your topic or what did you end up, where did you end up taking I was going to be discussing the, how to balance, uh, how, the importance of balancing health, business and lifestyle, kind of the you know, same theme off of the podcast. But mm -hmm. at, at, you know, the, I, I was the first speaker after lunch and we had all the morning speakers go and then we all, all the speakers and a bunch of people, all, we all decided to go to lunch together. And some of the people in the audience went, went, went with us. We all had a great lunch and I'm coming back and I'm like, I ended up, I still talked about health, business and lifestyle, but it wasn't fully on my path I was going to. We really started diving back to mindset development, mindset coaching and really, and really hammered that home just because we talked about whole, the theme was dreaming and, you know, envisioning your future and everything else. So it was a lot all of right. man manifestation and, and mental okay. uh, conversation. Yeah, cool, man. I'll check it out. With it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, that's something I'd like to get into. Um, I got a, like a, a, I got a workshop set up hopefully for next week. Um, but it's more, it'll, well, we'll see where I take it. Um, depends on what this company can do. There you go. Um, but I might, I might actually be dragging like 20 foam rolls in and actually like doing oh, wow. like actual work. Um, but I'd like to develop and I need to sit down and really try to map this out. Um, those things I can do. And like, that's obviously in my art and my craft, but it's going to be limited to a certain number, right? There's only so many way, so many people I can try to get us to do a psoas stretch properly at one time, right? And walk around and palpate a psoas. Yeah, how many people could you assist getting into that proper piriformis uh, type of uh, position to get that stretched out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I need to come up and I would like to develop some talks or presentations that literally have no physical component to where it's like it could go from, yeah, it could, you could have that same conversation to 500 people. Um, so that I need to sit down and like, and, and, I, and I'm hoping, you know, something like a podcast and every time I do talk, it does pull out my messaging a little bit better than me trying to like, what's my brand mission. And I well, try to and that's, and think it, again, that's why I keep telling people like, dude, just start putting in the reps. Like right? I, I don't know if my branding message may change later this year or next year. you right. Right. You just got to keep going and then things start clicking. Things start. I gotta start, start the podcast. How about that? Yeah, like <laughs> I talk about health, business, and lifestyle, but I guarantee you, seventy-five percent of my episodes are more heavily focused on the health and the lifestyle piece. We're not always digging heavily into the business, but it always trickles in here and there. And a lot mm -hmm. of people love the fact that I'm creating that balance. I've been told because most people just have a nutrition podcast, or you know, a health right. podcast, or a CrossFit podcast, whereas. I'm one of the few, why I designed it this way. I wanted to do something different. Right. So, well, it's, I think I said, I think it helps it be more conversational. Again, you get like somebody like a, uh, is it Jack Cruz? Is that how you say his last Jack name? Jack Cruz. Yeah. Cruz. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you you want to keep him on point cause he's such a niche topic to talk about. Oh yeah. Um, and he can, when, he could talk, he, he geek cause his whole thing is water light magnetism. Right. And yeah. And he, that guy is so intelligent that I need to get like, I'm, I'm, we're in talks now to get him to come back on again, but I'm like, cool. dude, we got to go even more simple. Like I know you're a highly intelligent guy, but like sometimes yeah. you're, you're blowing people's freaking minds. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I used to work with a guy who I was always like, yeah, I'm the middle ground. I can talk like smart, but kind of stupid. I'm like kind of stupid, but kind of smart. Like yeah. you're just smart. <laughs> you're too smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. There's a, uh, and he That's did a, a pretty good job in that episode, but there were some spots in that show where I was like, dude, you just blew that. I mean, I, I had to like catch him a couple of times. I'm like, oh, could you explain that? Could you explain that? Like, right. that, don't just throw that big word out there. <laughs> well, that's where I think you're, like I said, it being more conversational, um, it allows, 
I feel like somebody who's do, trying to do it really scripted and be really professional, if they didn't know that, would almost just have to like kind of gloss over it. They and, would. Like, they wouldn't let it ride. It. Versus they're not, being like, oh, they're not like, active listening. You yeah, like, hold listen. up, man. Like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm totally fucking lost. So if I'm yeah. lost, somebody else is. Or I'm like, yo, whoa, 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 whoa. Listeners, listeners, like help the listeners. Not everybody's going to know what the hell that word was. Could you please explain right. that further? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And me. It's, and me. Right. It's like you just threw out a psoas and I threw out piriformis just now. It's like, true. how many people know what the hell a piriformis is? Right. That's I had to true. explain that to my class on Friday. I'd keep people like, I was like, you ever do a piriformis stress? Like, pure what? Right. Yeah. That's I true. Just, I was like, well, you know how your glutes are always tight? Like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well, it's deeper than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I think about, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, again, postural, like it doesn't come across, you know, um, so the mindset no, but, stuff. I mean, a lot of people see the word biomechanics and they might right. feel like that may be very high level. And right. So, the, the, don't know what it is. Yeah. You, have, you yeah. have a great opportunity to, you know, play some episodes at the high level, but also bring them back down to a low level. So you're hitting on all sides of the demographics especially yeah. the younger generation coming into it, unless they're, you know, PTs or they're, they're studying, you know, anatomy, like they're not going to understand all this stuff. So, right. and this, this younger generation is supposedly supposed to be focused more on health and lifestyle balance. And they want that right. mentoring and coaching. So yeah. that's why I chose that as one of my demographics for the show. I feel it's almost my responsibility as a Gen X to give back to the next generation. So, right. I, I mean, it, if it dude. bleeds over to the older people, great. You know, I don't care, right. but it's not my target audience. So, well, listening to yours, like gave me, uh, the, I don't, not confidence, but gave me the, uh, I'm like, okay, cool. Like just go on and like, again, more conversational tone, being able to like, I totally plan on swearing and just being me. Um, and which, you know, could get too loose. Um, I, I said the same thing. I'm like, you know what, when I was firefighting out West there, dude, I was like, we were, freaking sailors. I mean, yeah. it was F bomb every five seconds. It took me yeah. a year and a half to chisel the F bombs down <laughs> in, uh, well, in a I, casual conversation. It's funny. I, I, when I work with an initial client, I'll usually drop something in pretty quickly because the one thing I realized, I'm like, most people swear. Like, yeah. and, and you're usually you're to, honest when you're swearing. Yeah. Drop the presentation. Um, yeah, I'm going more that route. Dude, I got to run. All right, man. Um, this was fun, and I appreciate all the insights. And like I said, you definitely inspired me because I saw your show, and it was like this is how I'd kind of want it, um, hey, conversation. I'm excited so, for you, dude. Like if, if this is just one of the benefits of me launching the show and I can inspire other people to have a show, cool. And yeah, man. I, I, if I can help you along the way, I told you. I'm happy to I, do that. I greatly appreciate it. All right, man. All right, brother. Take, Take care of yourself. Here. All right, later.